Now at 8 o'clock on WKYT this morning, a Lexington church will hold a special service this morning after several members of a Kentucky family die in a crash in Texas. And a fallen Jessamine County paramedic now has his name added to the National EMS Memorial Tree of Life. Find out how family and friends gather to honor their loved ones. That's ahead. And Preakness number 141 is in the books. We'll take a look at the highlights and find out the chances of seeing another Triple Crown winner this year. It's all coming up on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Moody. And I'm Meredith Jones. And if you're planning to get outside today, well, I don't think it's going to be that bad. A lot yeah. better than yesterday. It looks a whole lot better. Mike Linden is standing by in the First Alert Weather Center. How's it looking right now, Mike? Sean, a little foggy in a few spots. But other than that, really starting off well here on Sunday morning. A lot different from where we were on Saturday, that's for sure. Check it out across the state. Quite a few of our traffic cameras, if we look toward the Corbin area, the Jenkins area, and even Breathitt County, still a little foggy, but we are seeing that fog really beginning to burn off. Nonetheless, a fog, dense fog advisory in place until 9 a.m. for spots like Woodford County, Mercer, Boyle, Laurel, Lincoln, Pulaski counties, and that will continue again for at least another hour, but we are seeing visibility improve. A big problem area, though, to point out, Laurel County, and if you head toward the Corbin area just off the interstate, that is where you're going to find those denser pockets of the thick fog, and also if you look from the Jefferson County area southward toward Bowling Green along 65, some dense fog almost the entire way south. So take it easy if you are hitting the road today, as you likely should be going outside today, because we are truly looking at a beautiful Sunday for you. But we are looking at even more change after this brief dry spell. I'll show you when that arrives coming up. All right, Mike, thank you. We've been following this story since last night. A deadly crash in East Texas killed four members of a Kentucky family. That crash also sent four other people to the hospital. Yeah, the family attended a church here in Lexington. WKYT's Mike Byer is at the live desk with our top story this morning. This morning, as members of the Clays Mill Road Baptist Church gather for services, they'll also be mourning the loss of part of their congregation. The Department of Public Safety in Texas confirms four members of the Avalar family were killed in a crash. It happened on Highway 315 in Carthage near Tyler, Texas. Reports say the family slowed down while a car in front of them waited to make a left turn. But the SUV behind them didn't slow down. CBS 19 in Texas reports that the family in the van was rear-ended and pushed into an oncoming tractor trailer. Blake Collins from KGAS sent us this photo of the severely damaged van. The Department of Public Safety confirms that 46-year-old Israel Avalar died in the wreck. We're told his sons, 17-year-old Kevin, who is driving the van, his 13-year-old, and his 6-year-old were also pronounced dead at the scene. The pastor at Clays Mill Road Baptist Church tells us Israel's mother and wife are at a hospital in Tyler and his 11-year-old daughter is at a children's hospital in Dallas. We do not know their conditions this morning. Now, family members were on their way to Texas last night and they should be there this morning. Kerr Brothers Funeral Home here in Lexington is handling the arrangements for the, for the family. We're told the Clays Mill Baptist Church will remember the victims and pray for those injured in this morning's service. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. A woman in Clark County is facing charges after deputies say she led an officer on a chase on the interstate. According to court documents, a deputy tried to pull 39 year old Shawana Dotson over on I 64 for speeding, but instead, they say she sped up and started weaving in between other cars. They say when Dotson finally stopped, deputies said they smelled alcohol in her car and they say she told them she was drinking in Lexington. Family member, excuse me, in Wayne County, rather, deputies have arrested two men wanted for several burglaries. They caught Shane Savage and Timothy Brown after deputies say the pair broke into a home in the West Monticello subdivision on Friday. They say the homeowner followed their getaway car until the men jumped out of it. Deputies tracked them down and arrested them. Both of them now face multiple charges, including burglary and possession of burglary tools. It was a big day for horse racing in Maryland for the Preakness, but the day had its share of bad news. Two race horses died yesterday at Pimlico Racecourse. Homeboy Chris collapsed after the first race of the day while walking back to his barn. The Philly Premadia fractured a bone in her leg during a race and was put down on the track. The Washington Post says her jockey, Daniel Santino, broke his collarbone during the fall. Winning the Triple Crown may be one of the most elusive goals in all of sports. Only 12 horses have managed to win the prestigious title. 
That's right, and many were hoping to see back-to-back -back Triple Crown runners like Seattle Slough and Affirm did back in the 70s. But horse racing fans didn't get that wish this year. Lee K. Howard has highlights from the Preakness. American Pharaoh made it look so easy, but yesterday we are reminded that the Triple Crown is rare for a reason. Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist had the lead for most of the race, and as the pack headed down the stretch of Preakness 141, but the day belonged to Exaggerator, ridden by Kit DeSormo and trained by his brother Keith. Exaggerator took charge at the 316th pole and outlasted the tiring Nyquist down the stretch. It was the first loss for Nyquist, who won his first eight races. Cherry Wine finished in second. Nyquist took third. So a great trip by Nyquist and Kent DeSormo to win Preakness 141. Guys. Lee Kay, thank you. Friends and family of fallen paramedics spent their Saturday at our nation's capital to honor their loved ones. One of those honored was Jessamine County paramedic John Mackey. Nicholasville police say back in November, the ambulance that Mackey was in clipped a car, and when he got out to check, a driver hit him. Mackey's name was added to the National EMS Memorial Tree of Life, and his family received a U.S. flag, a white rose, and a medallion. They committed themselves to a lifetime of service first, and then ultimately gave their lives ser serving others. Truly, there is no greater love. Mackey's wife, children, parents, and siblings were all in Washington for that memorial. In Powell County, Stanton Elementary honored a late teacher's legacy. Joyce Hall passed away in March due to complications from the flu. The school held a yard sale called Rejoice. Proceeds from the sale will help pay to send kids to 4-H camp. As you can see, it's very crowded now. And it doesn't look like there's been much of a dent in it, but we have really gotten rid of a lot of stuff, but um, we have probably sent several truckloads out of here already. Any items not bought during the sale are going to charitable organizations around town. It's 8 7 on your Sunday morning and WKYT this morning is just getting started. We're learning new details this morning about Egypt Air Flight 804. We know the wreckage has been found. What questions still remain? That's ahead on WKYT this morning. And one man's trash is another man's or woman's table or lamp or decoration, pretty much anything. What is a junk festival? Coming up after Mike's forecast. And if you didn't have the opportunity to get outside yesterday, looks like you'll have the chance to do it all over again today. Coming up, I'll take you through the afternoon and show you whether or not we'll see sunshine. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Mike Linden. If you hadn't, have you haven't had the opportunity this weekend to get outside and enjoy the weather, guess what? Today looks like the day to make it all up because we are truly looking at some big changes on the way as we head into this afternoon. Right now, look across the state, still a little foggy in spots like Elizabethtown, Breathitt County beginning to clear up a little bit, and the Corbin area also showing improvement. Here at Breathitt County, a breathtaking view, but still a little foggy along the horizon. That is something that we will see, though, improve pretty quickly here, at least over the next hour. On the Defender Radar Network, quite a difference that 24 hours makes, right? Because we are just not seeing anything this morning compared to yesterday where we were looking at a dense blanket of overcast overcast clouds, not to mention as well a lot of rain to kick off our morning too. But now we're left with high pressure over the western side of the state that's pulling in cooler, drier air from the north. Now that is also what is causing the fog. When you have cooler air going up above warm air, you get the fog at the surface. And that's what we're finding this morning right along the western portion of the BG Parkway, along 65 and along I-75 South. Any of the counties colored in by this grayish overlay, including Casey, Mercer, Boyle counties, all going to be dealing with some dense fog as we get our morning started. Although we have seen the fog improve, or at least the visibility lines. As I mentioned, though, the southern quarter of I-75 still socked in in the Laurel County area with visibility at zero, as well as from Fort Knox southward toward Bowling Green. So if you're hitting the roadways, wherever you're going in the bluegrass today, 
take it easy. You're really not worth rushing, especially on a beautiful day like this afternoon. You'll pretty much have all day to get outside and enjoy the weather because as we start out this morning, pretty comfortably temperature wise in the mid to low 50s, we work our way back into the mid 70s. Quite a difference from where we were yesterday, where we only warmed up warmed up about six or seven degrees into the afternoon. Today, more like 20 degrees. Mostly sunny for most of the state, although eastern Kentucky could be looking at some cloud cover, not to mention a chance for some showers into the second half of the day. Very light showers, mind you. Monday afternoon looks a lot like this afternoon, but nicks the clouds. And then as we head into Tuesday, well, the sky is the limit for those temperatures, as we might even make a run at the lower 80s in some spots on Tuesday under dry conditions. A beautiful looking day here the next few. But if we look to Wednesday and beyond. Tropical moisture begins to work its way back northward, and that is what's going to trigger what looks to be a summer like pattern, really. A lot of that moisture returns to the bluegrass, and that will be the fuel for some thunderstorms and make things feel a little muggier than what we have been experiencing lately. So get outside today, tomorrow, Tuesday. You have no excuse to not mow the lawn here the next few days. Sunny skies, drier conditions, really looking and feeling nice for the next three days. Beyond that, though, from Wednesday into the holiday weekend, a chance for storms almost each and every day. But those temperatures, they certainly are improving with a less than a month ago until the start of the summer season. I'm sure nobody wants to hear that if they're making Memorial Day plans. Well, I mean, with, with storm chances, I mean, it yeah. doesn't look like, at least for now, it'll be a total washout. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll have to get closer to the weekend to uh, really give that forecast. But nonetheless, if you're making outdoor plans, always can't hurt to have a backup plan. Yep. That's right. All For right. Sure. Thank you, Mike. Well, you know that old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, that rings true for a pretty lot of people, but that probably they don't call their treasures trash. Yeah, instead, some call it junk, and then they go ahead and hold a festival. This is in North Dakota. It's the fifth annual Junk Festival, and it filled parts of Fargo with all kinds of stuff from furniture to jewelry, artwork, even a little bit of local food. They also had plenty of repurposed furniture made by some locals. How about that for turning some trash into treasure? All kinds of stuff that would go, you know, pretty much any house. Hey, if the price is right, yeah. buy it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and then you can fix it up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, it's 814 this morning. Yes. The WKYT returns. Search crews have located the wreckage of Egypt Air Flight 804 days after the plane went missing. We've got the latest on that investigation coming up. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $203 million. And Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $80 million. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. 817 now on your Sunday. And here's an update on our top stories. A senior Taliban commander says the current leader of the militant group is dead. Earlier, a U.S. official speaking anonymously said it appeared that Mullah Mansour and another were likely killed in an airstrike last night near the Afghanistan Pakistan border. A White House aide says President Obama authorized the attack on the Pakistani side of the border. In western Indonesia, six people are dead after a volcanic eruption there. The volcano shot ash as high as two miles up into the sky yesterday. Authorities say ash also tumbled down the slopes as far as three miles westward into a river. All the victims who were killed were working on their farms. A hospital spokesperson says the man who was shot by a Secret Service officer outside the White House remains in critical condition this morning. Investigators have identified the gunman as Jesse Oliveri of Ashland, Pennsylvania. The Secret Service says the officer fired one shot at the man Friday afternoon after he approached a checkpoint and refused repeated commands to drop his weapon. We've been following the story for days now. Crews have located the wreckage of Egypt Air Flight 804 days after the plane went missing. Yeah, they also recovered a critical clue that could help investigators figure out what caused the catastrophic crash. Jonathan Vigliotti has the latest on the investigation. Shredded clothing, shoes, and heavily damaged plane parts are just some of the items search teams have recovered from Egypt Air Flight 804. Investigators also found the doomed flight's black boxes, about 180 miles north of the Egyptian port city of Alexandria. The data could help determine what caused the plane to plummet wildly into the Mediterranean Sea Thursday morning, killing all 66 people on board. Technology played a critical role in tracking down the wreckage. Radar on board this E-130 helped find debris from the missing plane. 
The U.S. Navy sent a P-3 Orion to join in the search. The aircraft can detect wreckage from under the ocean's surface. Other countries like Greece, the U.K. and France have sent teams as well. The Aviation Herald, an aviation industry website, published automated transmissions from the plane minutes before it vanished from radar. They showed smoke was detected in the bathroom near the cockpit and avionics bay. It's very rare that you will have a fire that will simply you know, take over the aircraft and result in the aircraft actually ultimately crashing in the space of three minutes. So far, no terrorist group has claimed responsibility for bringing down the Airbus 320. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Crete. Egyptian investigators say it's still too soon to make a judgment about the cause of the crash based on the information they've collected so far. All right, 820 now on your Sunday morning. There's still more to come. That's right. Your sports is next. Exaggerator spoils Nyquist's bid for a triple crown, plus several members of the Kentucky 96 National Championship team got together this weekend. We hear from them next in sports. And if Saturday's weather had you down and stuck inside the house, Sunday is completely the opposite feel. Coming up, I'll take you into the afternoon and show you what lies ahead. Well, Saturday was overcast, wet, just wasn't really a pretty start to our weekend. Temperatures were cooler than normal as well, but we are already starting off pretty well here on Sunday morning. You can actually see the blue skies early on. In some spots, it's a little more difficult. Laurel County, a little foggy, but temperatures in the mid to low 50s will certainly work their way back closer to normal today than where we have been over the past few. Now, as I mentioned, Laurel County is among one of the many counties under a dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock this morning morning. That does include Anderson, Woodford, any of the counties along the BG Parkway West, I-65 South, and I-75 South, all in the midst of some pretty dense fog, especially so right on the southernmost corridor of I-75 before you head into Tennessee. Laurel County socked in as it has been almost all morning long, and the southern corridor of I-65, perhaps an even longer stretch of interstate from Fort Knox to Bowling Green. Visibility is limited there. Take it easy on those roadways. Moving into your afternoon today, as I mentioned, getting back into the mid to low 70s. So whereas yesterday afternoon we only warmed up about 6 or 7 degrees, today we warm up nearly 20. That's because of the sunshine. We'll actually see it today, seeing it already this morning, and we'll see even more of it this afternoon. So not back to normal just yet, which is right around the upper 70s, but pretty darn close to it as conditions dry out. A great day to get outside and mow the lawn. You have no excuses today. Sports is up next with Lee K. Howard. After a 37-year drought, American Pharaoh claimed horse racing's triple crown one year ago. With Nyquist's win at this year's Kentucky Derby, an unblemished record, many thought we could see back-to-back -back triple crown winners. One thing Nyquist had never done, though, was win on a sloppy track. The favorite had the lead at the final turn of the Preakness 141. Larry Colmas takes it from there. And they're into the stretch, and it's Nyquist in front. It certainly was Exaggerator's Day. What a race he had. Meanwhile, Big Blue fans finally remember the UK teams like the 1978 National Champs and the, and the 2004 Cats under John Calipari. Same holds true, though, for the 96 Wildcats, a team that this summer will gather in Miami for a 20 year reunion. Five members of that team got together uh, okay. yesterday to sign autographs at a local RV dealer Jeff Shepard, Cameron Mills, Jeff, Jared Prickett, Derek Anderson, and Wayne Turner were on hand. These guys say the 96 team is one of the best in UK history because of the camaraderie they share. There was kind of this X factor that I'm sure a lot of teams have because I can't imagine a lot of teams hate each other, but we loved each other. I mean, we, you've got completely dis different personalities in here, guys from completely different backgrounds, different socioeconomic statuses. 
with us, you could lose your starting position in a practice just that quick. So if somebody, like if, if Padgett came out and played me in practice today, he would be starting the next day. So we, we came into practice every day just fighting to keep our starting spots. Always good to hear from those guys. That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great Sunday. Well, for most couples, they choose to have a destination wedding because they want their special day to be spent in a special location. Well, that wasn't the case for one Canadian couple. Yeah, they were looking for some special guests. They picked Central California for their wedding destination because of, right there, the cats. 1,100 of them, to be precise. They said they decided to get married at Cat House on the Kings because their love for animals brought them together. That had to be a pretty unique ceremony. Yeah, I hate to call my mom out, but she has a lot of cats. Yeah? Crazy cat lady? Uh, we're not going to call her a crazy okay. cat lady, but she likes to save them and put them out, but there's a lot. I'm a cat lover. That's okay. Yeah, you 8, are. <laughs> 846 on your Sunday morning. We'll have more news when we return. Good morning. I'm Bill Bryant. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray talks about issues facing the city as he also runs for the U.S. Senate. Some of my Kentucky Newsmakers interview coming up. This Sunday morning, the design issue, from cowboy boots to fish tanks to the mansions of Newport, Rhode Island. Listen for the trumpet. Welcome back. Coming up on CBS Sunday morning, you'll tour the legendary Newport, Rhode Island. Then you'll explore some of the tallest flowers on earth, and you'll talk golf course design with the great Jack Nicklaus. That's all coming up on Sunday morning right here on WKYT from 9 to 1030. Or Nicholas, you know, however you prefer. I, think, <laughs> I was like, what just I came out of my hold, mouth just then? I had to hold it back. <laughs> it's all good. Whatever you want to do outside today. If you want to go golfing, you want it's to okay. take your dogs to the dog park. If you have to mow the lawn, as most people have been putting it off, you really have no excuses. Today or for the next few days, your tea time will not be in jeopardy. There is really not much coming in the way as far as the weather goes the next few days. Temperatures are improving, as are the conditions. A little brief dry spell for us here as temperatures get back to normal in the mid to high 70s. But by Wednesday, it starts to feel and look a lot more like late spring as we work our way into summer. So Wednesday, the storms come back, so start to feel a little muggier. But hey, a run back to the 80s, that's pretty nice, especially for those planning Memorial Day barbecues. Yeah, so make the most of, of today and the next couple of days, I guess. That's right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Nobody is more up to date than you to start your day. That's right. The news is always on WKYT. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a good day.